order. I be the king of the rock, there is none higher. Fuck Jay Z, y'all should call me sire. I won't stop rocking till I retire. I got me all rich, y'all got niggas fired. Motherfuckers, it's we see you got a problem. Hats to them Katrina victims, we still mobbing. Shiny black coupe at night, look like a goblin. AK on a backseat, baby, it's so vibrant. Watch me let it spray like a hydrant, can't dodge it. You not getting wet in the rain, is not logic. There's an old saying of there is no room for two kings and one castle. There can only be one true king. But simply wanting to be the best has been a part of the culture since the very beginning. Who can rock the party and the crowd the most? Who's the best break dancer? Who's the best rapper? Etc. Being the greatest and best is one thing, but uneasy is the head that wears the crown, especially pertaining to rap. Upcoming people are always gunning for that top spot and grow hungrier by the day. Those people want to wear the crown and be king one day as well. But let's take it back to the early 2000s when Jay-Z was regarded as one of, if not the greatest rappers alive. Whether you agree or disagree is your opinion, but this is what the discussion was, especially at this time. Jay-Z would quote unquote retire from the rap game in November of 2003 with his Black Album. A year later, Lil Wayne would drop the first installment of his legendary album series, The Carter, in June of 2004, and on the song Bring It Back off of that album, Wayne would declare himself the best rapper alive since the best rapper retired. But before I get more into the video, I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this because you guys could be doing a million other things right now, but instead you're here with me and I appreciate that. If you guys like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love. It's all good. Also, let me know where you're tuning in from, represent where you're from, but without further ado, let's get into the video. So the year is 2003 and Jay-Z is gearing up to drop his quote-unquote retirement album at the time. But this time, Jay had pretty much accomplished it all. He had the accolades platinum albums and songs, made millions of dollars, had one of the hottest record labels, etc. I mean, we can go on and on about Jay-Z's resume that he had to that point in 2003, and it's a pretty extensive resume. Some people thought that this retirement was premature, but Jay had been in the game since the late 80s, early 90s, and counting his debut album, Reasonable Doubt, from 1996, he had eight solo albums with the inclusion of the Black Album itself, not counting soundtracks, live albums, collab albums, etc. Retirement for Jay is actually something that Jay had contemplated since Reasonable Doubt and every album leading up to 2003. By the time of the Black Album, Jay was burnt out and was essentially releasing an album every year. With this retirement, we would see Jay focus on being Sean Carter, the businessman, instead of Jay-Z, the rapper. On the flip side of this, we have Lil Wayne, who by 2003 had been into the BGs with the rapper who went on to be known as BG and the Hot Boys with Juvenile, BG, and Turk. Mind you, I'm not really going to get into like the whole squad up thing, but yeah, I mean around, you know, like, like the early 2000s was the whole squad up era of Wayne, but like I said, I'm not really going to get into that, just like I'm really not going to get into the Hot Boy thing. But Wayne was the youngest member of the Hot Boys, putting him at around 15 when their debut album, Get It How You Live, was released in 1997. The different members of the Hot Boys would each have their own solo careers while on Cash Money, but would all leave the label at various points, excluding Wayne at this time. The people around Cash Money during the early stages of Wayne's career knew that Lil Wayne was a star in the making with some time, and in November of 1999, Lil Wayne would drop his debut album, The Block Is Hot. I actually didn't know that this album went on to be platinum, but The Block Is Hot peaked at number three 
on the US Billboard 200 chart, selling 229,000 copies in its first week. Number wise, it was a great debut album, but Wayne's next two releases in Lights Out and 500 Degrees didn't do as well number wise as The Block Is Hot. Lights Out would release in late 2000 and 500 Degrees would release in 2002. But as far as the story between Lil Wayne and Jay-Z, one of the first things we have to mention is what happened in 2004. This is the year that Lil Wayne would release the first installment of his legendary album series, The Carter. The second single for the album, Go DJ, was Wayne's first solo hit because the song peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song The Block Is Hot back in 1999 peaked at number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart for reference. But also on The Carter, Lil Wayne would make a bold statement. In the song Bring It Back off of the album, Lil Wayne would say that he was the best rapper alive since the best rapper retired. Mind you, this was in 2004, so Lil Wayne was about 22 or 21 when he said this. The man was barely the legal age to drink and was already declaring himself the best rapper alive, whether people want to agree with that or not. And to note in 2004, Jay was about 35 or 34, but Wayne has spoken multiple times throughout his career about him calling himself the best best rapper alive. In an interview in 2004 with IGN, Wayne was asked if anybody at that time tested him for his statement of being the best rapper alive and Lil Wayne said that he had yet to see. He also said that if anybody did try to test him, that he swore to eat them for breakfast because they're weaklings. To go back a little bit on Jay's Black album, on the track Dirt Off Your Shoulder, Jay-Z said that he was the best rapper alive. Now Jay has said other lines and other songs about him being the best, but but this is the one song that everybody mentions in terms of the whole Wayne thing. So Jay definitely believed that he was the best rapper alive. How he went from bricks to billboards and from grams to Grammys. You guys probably already know the rest. But Lil Wayne would appear on a track in 2004 that would ultimately change his life. And it happened to be on a track with Jay-Z's future wife. The Destiny's Child track we know today as Soldier would feature Lil Wayne and T.I. and would peak at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. During an interview with XXL, Lil Wayne noted that Jay-Z had personally selected him for the track. Wayne has actually talked about how it was considered a gamble to have him on the track and was told to kill his verse, and I think that he definitely ended up knocking it out of the park with the time that he had. Also in 2004, Lil Wayne would drop a mixtape entitled The Prefix, and it's 13 songs long and features Lil Wayne rapping over nine of Jay-Z's instrumentals of songs like Public Service Announcement, December 4th, Dirt Off Your Shoulder, etc. The very next year in 2005, Wayne would drop the Carter 2, which people seem to really want me to do a video on. Let me know if you want that video in the comments and I would be down to do it, especially since I have some potential insider stuff about that album if I make the video. But on this album, Lil Wayne would have a song as clear as day titled Best Rapper Alive. And it's one of my favorite Wayne songs Ever. It's crazy from start to finish and Wayne was making it clear that he was the best rapper alive Here's what he had to say about this song and the statement that he made I ain't getting no flack from that. I mean, of course from the haters, but I mean from the man from Jay I ain't nobody you know he propped me up when he see me It gave me a lot of confidence to put that song put a new song out called the best rapper like, on my album and you know the motivation was just already there and I felt like I had to do whatever I could do um, talent wise and make it what it was but around the mid-2000s, Lil Wayne was thinking about jumping ship from Cash Money to Rockefeller. In an interview, Lil Wayne would say, You know, when I went out to talk to him about being at Rockefeller, and mind you, this was years ago. First of all, he was at the 4040 in the daytime, and when I got up there, he was talking. It was Denzel Washington. It was Derek Jeter. I was like, this is his click, and they up there just laughing at jokes I just don't get. He literally sat me down next to him, and this is where all that is going on at, and he sat me right there. Like, you ain't a part of this, you know? And he would talk to me on the side after every joke. That man offered me $175,000. I said, believe that. I was looking like two teeth 
in my mouth is $175,000. My bottom teeth. Wayne actually has a skit on his mixtape, The Dedication, which was released in 2005, titled Wayne Explains His Deal, in which Wayne does exactly that. But Wayne has said that it was very tough when the Rockabella deal didn't happen, but he remained loyal to cash money, and legend has it that Wayne was ready to sign with Jay until a Birdman and the label reeled him back in with a quote-unquote offer that he couldn't refuse. Another funny thing about the Wayne Rockefeller thing is that Jay-Z said that after him and Wayne had their meeting, Jay called Birdman out of respect and told him what happened. Next thing Jay knows, he gets a letter from Wayne's camp claiming quote unquote torturous interference. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that is hilarious. I'm like, <laughs> But 2006 would be the year that Jay-Z would come out of retirement and drop the album Kingdom Come in November of that year. So Jay was now back and the landscape of rap was now a little different. Jay left when Wayne was emerging into his own in the game and now with him back, Wayne had truly begun to show why he was the best rapper alive. In the self-titled track, off of the Kingdom Come album, Jay-Z would say that he was the king of New York, but not only the king of New York, and was also hip-hop savior. So after this flow, you might owe him a favor. In December of that year, Complex posted an interview with Lil Wayne, and he would say, I'm better than him. I'm 24 years old. I'm 13 years deep with five albums and 10 million records sold. I don't like what he's saying about how he had to come back because hip hop's dead and we need him. What the F do you mean? If anything, it's reborn. So he's probably having a problem with that. You left on a good note and all of the artists were saying, yo, this is Jay's house. He's the best. Now he comes back and still thinks it's his house. It's not your house anymore. And I'm better than you. Mind you, this was also said around the time Nas was released the album hip hop is dead which stirred up discussion around the title of the album in my video about the carter 3 which you should definitely check out by the way i went into more detail about how wayne felt about the album's name specifically but little wayne would double down on the comments about jay-z in a phone call with hot 97 radio something else to mention is that little wayne would drop a lot of music in 2006 he would drop the w dot carter collection with which was a mixtape that was released to promote the launch of Lil Wayne's line of Reebok sneakers. Some of you that are seeing this might be familiar with the S. Carter collection that Jay-Z would initially do in 2003, in which the mixtape came packaged with the box of the first run of Jay-Z's Reebok S. Carter 1 shoe. In 2006, Wayne would also drop projects like the Carter Files and the Like Father Like Son album, but I'm not really going to get into those in this video. The project that I want to get into is Dedication 2 and Lil Wayne would have a skit on the project where he further talked about him being the best rapper alive and he would say, I don't think I'm better than anybody personally. I don't think I'm better than anybody spiritually. I don't think I'm better than anybody in any way or form or fashion. But as far as this rap thing, I think I am better than everybody. I'm a competitor. I hope everybody else feel the same way about their craft, you know what I mean? If you do, it makes it better for the people. It makes it better for the listeners dog and that's how i feel about mine so if you're listening and you want to hear somebody that's dedicated to what they do i'm so dedicated that i feel i'm the best and that's that this project was hosted by DJ Drama, and he would give further insight into what Wayne was saying. At the time, that was coming off of Hove saying, hands down, he was the greatest. Here comes Tunchi staking the claim and putting the crown on him. I actually wrote the script out for him to have that conversation. He dedicated that to me when he discussed that. That was me almost doing an interview on the tape for him to get into that mode to say how he felt about being the best rapper alive. Little Wayne would also have a project entitled Louisiana that was released this year and had a song on there named Doe is what I got where he raps over the instrumental to Jay-Z song show me what you got which appeared on his kingdom come album but in the song Wayne would say that when it comes down to recording he must be LeBron James if Jay-Z is Jordan in Jay's music, he compares himself to Michael Jordan, who's widely considered to be the greatest basketball player of all time. 
Jay-Z sees himself as such, but in the rap game. Lil Wayne in the song compares himself to LeBron James, who people see as like a modern equivalent of like the greatness of Jordan, but scratches that and compares himself to Kobe Bryant because he sees him as more fitting, being that at this time, LeBron James had no rings and with Kobe, he had rings and had stayed with the same team. In 2020, Nori, who at one point in time was on Rockefeller under Jay-Z, said on Drink Champs that when Wayne rapped over the Show Me What You Got beat, Jay had to take a long walk and look at himself in the mirror. Jay would ask himself if he still had it, which caught Wayne off guard because he had never heard that story before. Something else to note is that Jay is known to be the king of subliminal disses. He's done this many times in his career, and in the third verse of his song Trouble, which appeared on the Kingdom Come album, people think that Jay was sending shots at Wayne, like the entire third verse. But now we're going to go back to the comments that Lil Wayne made in the Complex Magazine interview in December of 2006. After his comments, he would double down on Hot 97, but in February of 2007, in an interview with Double XL, Wayne would say, I want to apologize to Jay and his family and friends because I was asked that question and they put it in there like I was just feeling like, oh, you know what, man? I'm better than Jay. They came at me like, so you say that you're the best? Can you say that you're better than everybody? Would you say you're better than Jay? I was like, yeah, dude, I'm better than everybody, but I'd like to throw that apology out there because of whatever trouble I caused. I didn't want that to happen. Lil Wayne would also drop the project The Drought 3 in 2007, where he had the song Black Republicans featuring Joel Santana, which was inspired by Jay-Z and Nas's song Black Republican, which appeared on the Hip Hop Is Dead album. But Jay wasn't done sending shots at Wayne, allegedly, because on the song Watch What You Say To Me on T.I.'s album T.I. vs. Tip, which was released in July 2007, Jay would say, I hear you baiting me lately. I've been doing my best just to stay hater free. Still watch what you say to me sooner or later i take you up on your offer and put you all in your place like i'm replacing your father you talking to the author the architect of the blueprint my dna in your music dude you stupid the father reference is when people thought that Jay was talking about Birdman, which made them assume that Jay was talking about Wayne, but in November of 2007, Jay-Z would release the album American Gangster, and Lil Wayne would appear on the song Hello Brooklyn 2.0, and this marked the first collaboration between Jay and Wayne. Hello Brooklyn 2.0 was actually meant to be on the Carter 3, but it was given to Jay-Z. This same month, Jay would bring out Lil Wayne to a performance at the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York where Jay performed Hello Brooklyn 2.0 and then Wayne played his song that he featured on with Play a Circle called Duffel Bag Boy. During the performance, Wayne pointed to Jay-Z and called him the best rapper alive and then pointed at himself and said the next rapper in line. So things appeared to be cool between the two and Jay would appear on Lil Wayne's album The Carter 3 which released in June of 2008. But by The Carter 3 in 2008, Lil Wayne was the best rapper commercially in the streets, skill wise, all of that etc. The Carter 3 would be a massive success being Wayne's first number one album and selling over a million copies in the first week. Lil Wayne has said in interviews that The Carter 2 didn't do what he wanted it to do and was a disappointment because he put his all into the album but he didn't dwell on it. But with The Carter 3, Wayne was now literally on top of the rap game undoubtedly. But back to the track Mr. Carter, and I've actually spoken to the guy who co-produced the track alongside Infamous, his name is Drew, and he used to be Wayne's engineer. But the track Mr. Carter is essentially Jay-Z passing the torch to Lil Wayne. At the beginning of Jay's verse, he says that he's in his chair with his crown and referred to Wayne as his heir. This was Wayne's reaction to the line. That line right there was hard, unbelievable. I didn't even realize it at first. My homie had to tell me. You know what he said, right? I didn't even get it. I was like, why is he saying air? Is he just talking about the air? But I'm smart enough to know that he's smart enough not to just be talking about the air. I felt real dumb, but then I felt so good. It was an incredible compliment. In the outro of the song, Wayne is quoting lyrics from a Jay-Z song entitled Lucky Me. This song would appear on Jay-Z's album In My Lifetime, Volume 1. And Wayne has said that Lucky Me is his favorite song of all time. 
The song title is actually tatted on his neck and he has a verse of the song tatted on his leg. It's very clear that Wayne has always idolized Jay-Z from the beginning and looked up to him. People around Wayne have also talked about how he looked up to Jay-Z. What I actually find really interesting is that originally Jay-Z wanted to name his debut album Heir to the Throne according to Jonathan Mannion, the man who was the photographer for the album that would become Reasonable Doubt. Now you might be asking the heir to what throne? Well, if you're a rap fan and could put two and two together on what the rap landscape was like back in 1996, then you could quickly figure out. But in that same year, 2008, Lil Wayne would appear on the monstrous song Swagger Like Us with Jay-Z, T.I., and Kanye West. That same month, Jay-Z would do an interview with Vibe Magazine and he would say, you should embrace the next generation. In hip hop, you always fight the next person coming because that person wants your spot. He first approached me as a fan. When he felt like he was close enough, he was like, maybe I can take his head off, which is natural. I think he really is a fan of mine. I think he really loves the stuff that I've done. But as a person, as a competitor, that's only natural. There was a time when Kobe was like, I think I can take Mike. I admire that in a way. The public has him in line next. And for me to say he's not in line next would be foolish. That's what the public says, so why not? But going into 2009, things were still good between Jay and Wayne. They had won a Grammy for Swagger Like Us and performed at the same event. But things would take a turn again in the relationship of Lil Wayne and Jay-Z when Jay was named the hottest MC in the game by MTV. In response to this, Birdman would say, I don't think Jay-Z is the number one MC in no kind of way. Wayne's the best. He do the most, he make the most money. I don't think no dude in the business make more money than us. How can you be the best if you don't make the most money? And you don't do the most. Lyrically, come on man, be for real. Can't nobody F with Wayne. If you number one and you ain't getting no money, it don't mean nothing. <laughs> I just had to do that, I'm sorry. <laughs> but even though Lil Wayne didn't say this, he still has a very close association with Birdman, with their father-son type relationship, and he was guilty by association. But Wayne and Jay were still cool, and it was Birdman really igniting the flame between them again, as we will see. But Jay-Z would drop his album, The Blueprint 3, in September of 2009, and he would shout out Lil Wayne on his songs, Death of Autotune, and A Star Is Born. On A Star Is Born, Jay would say that Wayne was scorching hot and that he applauds him. Hopefully he keeps it going, he'll pass the torch to him. A month later, Wayne would release the mixtape No Ceilings, where he would rap over the instrumentals to Jay-Z's songs Death of Autotune and Run This Town. Now we'll skip to the top of 2010, where Jay would do an interview and would address what Birdman had to say about him, and he would say, being lyrical is just a matter of opinion. It's who you like, so that's his opinion. As far as money, that's a little more factual. We can determine that. Put it up. If he's that confident, I'll give him a little glimpse. It's crazy. Cut it out. Knock it off. If he believes that, I respect that. That's his guy. He's supposed to ride with his guy. But 2010 is when Lil Wayne would get sentenced to one year in prison for weapons charges stemming from his arrest in July of 2007. Before this, he would appear on stage with Young Jeezy when Jeezy was opening for Jay-Z. Lil Wayne would start his sentence in March and he would be released in November. So nothing really crazy happened between the two during this time period. But Wayne would get released and at the top of 2011, Kanye and Jay-Z would have released their first single, Ham, for their Watch the Throne album. In this song, Jay sends a shot at Birdman and would question how much money Birdman had and said that he didn't even have enough money to compete with Beyonce. Birdman would reply to this and say that they were going to keep on spending quote unquote baby money and he said that billionaire minds stay tuned. But Lil Wayne would also respond to what Jay said and he said that he wouldn't make it a competition because the subject that Jay's talking about in that line is that he can't box with the God. When Wayne would say that he would be the first one to tell given his wit and the type of person that he is is that he would capitalize and play off of it. So Jay-Z and Kanye would have released the album Watch the Throne in August of 2011. Now those who are fans of Drake and Lil Wayne already heard about this long-awaited Drake and Lil Wayne collab album that eventually never happened. 
Well, around this time in 2011 is when it was reportedly in the works and Birdman would say that he listened to a few songs off of Watch the Throne and it had an older feel to him. He thought that Drake and Wayne were still young with Drake being around 23 or 24 and Wayne being around 28. Birdman compared this to Kanye and Jay being older and Birdman said that they were both really on their way out of the game. Boy was he wrong about that. <laughs> Birdman was definitely wrong about that. But Watch the Throne would drop at the beginning of August that year and the Carter 4 would release later on that month. On the Carter 4, Wayne has a song called I'm Good where he would send a shot at Jay-Z. Little Wayne would reply to the baby money line that Jay has said on Ham and Wayne said that he would kidnap his girl to get that how much you love your lady money. Now Lil Wayne was asked about this line in particular and he said that he knew that there wouldn't be any repercussions behind what he said. He said that music is about perception. You can't do anything but perceive what you hear. He added that he can't even be upset about someone's reaction. And Wayne was right because Jay didn't take this response as a threat and took it as a flip of a line. He said it was a part of the sport and the competition. Jay said that he wasn't really speaking to him, but he understood that Wayne was holding the flag, so he did the right thing for his camp. But mind you, this is what Jay said a couple of years later in 2013. But let's dial it back to the beginning of 2013. 2012, when during YMCMB's pre Grammys party, Wayne would throw a shot at the Watch the Throne album in a freestyle. I don't think that this was too serious because it's reported that on Christmas Day, a month and some change before, Lil Wayne and Kanye responded together at an LA Lakers game. Kanye and Jay got the last laugh in that situation though because Wayne was nominated for a Grammy in four different categories, but Kanye and Jay proceeded to win every single one of them. The next year is when Jay finally responds to Wayne's song, I'm Good. Jay-Z would drop his album Magna Carta Holy Grail in July of 2013, and on the song La Familia, he said good luck kidnapping his wife. But after this, I mean, nothing really crazy would happen, at least between Jay-Z and Wayne. Jay-Z took almost a four-year gap between Magna Carta Holy Grail and 444. Wayne also had major major issues with his label on the road to the fifth installment of his Carter album series. In July 2015, Wayne would release the mixtape Free Wheezy, which was exclusively on title for a bit. At this time, when you thought of title, you thought of Jay-Z, not really gonna get into the whole title Jay-Z thing, but two years later, Wayne was doing a concert in Pennsylvania, and he told the crowd that he was a member of Rock Nation, which of course was founded by Jay-Z. Lil Wayne never ended up officially being a part of Rock Nation and said that Jay is a good guy and he just wants to help him. This was all while Wayne was battling cash money in court. Finally, Lil Wayne would be able to release the Carter 5 in September of 2018 and Wayne would also disclose some information about Jay-Z later that year. While on stage at a concert, Lil Wayne took the stage to thank Jay-Z for his assistance in paying back his debt and Swizz Beats who sent him every beat that he made and wanted Wayne to rap on every single one of them until he got his situation straight. Referring to Jay, Wayne would say that he helped him when he was really, really, really down. Back in 2012, it's reported that Lil Wayne was facing over $7 million in back taxes owed to the IRS, so Jay-Z would come in and help Wayne out. I really wanted to end this story off on a good note because after 2018, I mean nothing really crazy happened between Wayne and Jay. In my opinion, there never really was any real beef between Wayne and Jay at least, and instead was just them being really competitive, especially over the throne. Jay-Z felt like he had the throne, but then he retired. While he was gone, Lil Wayne would emerge and Jay-Z claimed that he was still king when he came back, but Wayne said that he was holding the rap game down in his absence and he was now the king but it also really makes me think of what if Lil Wayne did sign to Rockefeller and Jay-Z didn't make that call to Birdman but I guess something else did come up between Jay-Z and Wayne and that's when in 2021 Jay-Z said that nobody could see him in the verses I posted this in my community tab and I think that it's still up and looking back at it now I understand where Jay-Z is coming from and in a way he's supposed to feel like that I personally believe there are definitely people who feel 
fit in the criteria to verse him in a versus battle, but one name people did mention was Wayne's name. Now, obviously, this battle would never happen. I mean, Jay-Z doing a versus, Jay-Z would never do a versus. And I don't think that Jay-Z would even verse Lil Wayne. But as far as who would win, to me, that probably depends on your age. If you're older, you're more likely to side with Jay-Z. And if you're younger, then you're probably more likely to side with Wayne. All I gotta say is, the people who are doubting Wayne, go watch Wayne's live performance where he performed the song Gossip on BET. Go watch that right now, and you'll see Wayne isn't no pushover. I arrest my case. Like, Wayne, Wayne, yo, I'm just saying. But if people really are underestimating Wayne, then they never really have listened to Wayne at all, or they haven't really delved into the mixtape Wayne, which many people think is the best version of Lil Wayne. But I'm not trying to go down the whole rabbit hole today. And you know, but yeah, but all in all, let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section below. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.